Hailed as a personal masterpiece, the second of tonight's films by Michael Powell is the original and full 1937 version of The Edge of the World, an evocative story of life, love and death on a secluded Shetland island. Before the film, Powell gives an introduction which was made in 1978, when he and actor John Laurie returned to the island of Fula to see for themselves what changes had occurred. These are Pinewood Film Studios, where J. Arthur Rank and Lady Yule backed their fancy before the war. He was a corn miller and a Yorkshire Methodist. She was a banker's wife and a racehorse owner. Between them, they're the founding father and mother of the modern British film. The first film made at Pinewood was Pygmalion, with Wendy Hiller and Leslie Howard. A young man called David Lean edited it. Anthony Asquith directed it. You know it better as My Fair Lady. Since then, there have been Oliver Twist, The Red Shoes, all the James Bond films, and hundreds of others by British. My name is Michael Powell. I'm a film director. This is my life. In 1921, yes, 57 years ago, when I was still at school, I read my first fan magazine. And in it, there was an article about movie making. I fell in love right away. This was for me. In 1931, I directed my first film. It was a thriller. That same year, I read in the newspaper about the population of St. Kilda, a lonely island in the Scottish Hebrides. They'd asked to be taken off the island because the young people were all going away and there were no children at the village school. I thought one day I would make a film of this. One day. In 1936, I led an expedition to the island of Fula in the Shetland Islands to make the film. Fula was an inhabited island, and the leading part was played by John Laurie. In 1978, I took John Laurie and myself and a crew back to Fula to see the places and the people that had meant so much to us when we were all very much younger. I call this new film, Return to the Edge of the World. This is Fula, westernmost of the Shetland Isles. Latitude 60 degrees, as far north as the southern tip of Greenland. 800 miles north of Piccadilly Circus. Nothing between us and the North American continent but the Atlantic Ocean. The edge of the world. 
This is the Cane, the highest sea cliff in Great Britain, 1,220 feet from sky to sea. This was where a young film director called Michael Powell brought us in 1936 to make a film about the death of an island. It started out just a film, but it became an experience that changed all our lives. The Shetland Islanders are proud of their descent from the old Viking rovers. We are not Scottish, we're Norse, they tell me. <laughs> the name Pula is Norse, the island of Burns. Fula is the breeding ground of the great skewer. Vonksy, the locals call him. <laughs> and the bumps on the head he'll give you in the breeding season. So watch out. Forty-two years ago, we landed on Fula around midnight, after six hours at sea in an open motorboat. Today, Fula has an airstrip, and we fly in in 15 minutes. In 1936, the whole population of the island acted in our film. Today, there are only six of our original company left and still living on the island. But the same families are still steadfast. The same names, Gears, Greys, Eisbesters, Mansons, Holborns, Ratters. They're all here to greet us. With me are a camera and sound crew, Sidney Streeter, who was chief of construction on the original film and is now co-producer, Hamish Sutherland, who played the young minister, and he's brought his wife Joan with him. My wife Frankie, who appeared in the opening sequences of the film with me. And of course, the one and only John Laurie. Edith, you were a bonny lassie, and now you're a bonny woman. Lady, time. So, you remember me? I do remember you. Jimmy Gray. It is Jimmy Gray. Oh, Jimmy, how nice man. And here's Robbie. So it is Robbie, and you're an eyes whistler. Eyes whistler. Of course he is, with a face like that, what else could he be? And who's this? That's my son. Of course there's another eyes whistler now as there never was. So what's your name? Eric. Eric. Ah, Eric. Oh, you're grand. You're a visitor. I'm a visitor. I'm sure you are. Ah, now there's a real full of face. Your name, dear? My McGear. My McGear, yes. I'm thinking back. My McGear it is. Hamish, Hamish, we're coming to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, I didn't you. And here was I was walking. Of course, I remember Ronnie. Yes. Now here I'm behaving like an Englishman. <laughs> I brought my boots with me because it's my ambition to climb the cave while I'm here. I climbed, climbed it so many times when we were here previously that I insist on climbing it again. Oh, That's yes. We'll Clear the runway, then. people, please. Clear the runway now. Missionary. Fuller again. At long last. Oh, oh by the way, I'm, I'm John Lowry. You may be seeing me around. After all, I've been acting for 57 of my 81 years. <laughs> Hamlet, Stratford and Avon. At the Croft are in Hitchcock's 39 steps. Private Fraser and Dad's army, and of course, Peter Manson and Michael Powell's The Edge of the World. There were two families in Michael's story. The Mansons 
and the Greys, your lot. Now, I was the head of one, Finley Curry was the head of the other. Finley was in his sixties, and so when it came to the filling test, I, uh, I overdid the age in a wee bit. Michael took one look at me and says, Beat in the snowstorm, John. Away we and wash it off. <laughs> and now, look at me, Eric. Just right for the part. Hmm? Don't tell anyone. I'm a poet. A poet is not without honor, save in his own country. And I suppose that's why most of my big chances were given me by Hungarians or Americans. This one, The Edge of the World, was given me by Joe Rock, an American ex vaudeville comedian who was making pictures at Elstree. He was financed by a North Country showman called Isles, who was crazy about brass bands. These two, Joe Rock and Isles, the vaudeville comedian and the brass band enthusiast, gave me the money to make The Edge of the World. When the film was shown in London, it didn't exactly set the Thames on fire, but we got a print to New York and the New York critics chose it as one of the best foreign films of the year. That got me a contract with Corder, and that led to The Thief of Baghdad, The Spy in Black, The Lion Has Wings. And when I was in Canada making 49th Parallel, six of my Fuller brothers were with me. Do you remember, Michael, how you and I made our approach to those fuller cliffs on the landward side? <laughs> how we crawled forward on our hands and knees and looked fearfully down at the gannets plummeting into the sea way below. And yet, within a week or so, <laughs> you and the camera crew were scrambling about on the ledges like mountain goats. And I was carrying on my shoulders, a lamb struggling and bawling and kicking like a mad thing. Hey, <laughs> man, man. Those were the golden days, Michael. It's spring here, down north. <laughs> the time of the white nights. And the long days and the flowers. Mm -hmm. Just 42 years since we art with Michael, Frankie, and Niall McGuinness on board. Dropped anchor down there in the wee harbor. And we started our film. <laughs> <laughs> 